So I'm here with President Adams um, and Sister Adams. Um, tell us a little bit about yourselves. Well, my name is David Adams, and this is my wife, Anna. And uh, we have uh, been released uh, from our mission now uh, almost three months. And we serve from uh, 2012 until 2015. We would love to be with you today, but we are in San Francisco, or we will be in San Francisco at the wedding of our oldest daughter. But we are with you in spirit. Tell us a little bit about the situation of the mission in the church when you arrived in Madagascar. The uh, church was, uh, was growing, and uh, over the previous uh, several years, there had been a, a fairly significant expansion of uh, cities uh, where uh, there were branches uh, spread over a good portion of uh, Madagascar. And there had been uh, quite a few uh, baptisms occurring every year. Um, there was a good, uh, good spirit there, but uh, there were some challenges uh, with those uh, uh, great numbers of baptisms to, to take care of uh, each of those new converts. Um, one of the other challenges we had was uh, that uh, the church was spread over large areas and uh, some fairly remote uh, cities. So that made a challenge or a, a difficult uh, for the, uh, the mission president who has the keys uh, over these uh, various units of the church to visit and to train and to um, uh, help shepherd the, the, the maturing and the growth of the, the uh, church in these areas. President Adams, you mentioned that um, the focus of the area presidency was the centers of strength. So what are the centers of strength in Madagascar currently? Well, of course, we have the two stakes in Antananarivo. And those stakes are, uh, are growing. And uh, probably within not too distant future, there will be three stakes uh, in Tana. Um, we also have... Uh, the Ansira Bay District, which currently has eight branches, and uh, the Tamatov District, uh, which has five branches. The branches in Tamatov are right in Tamatov. The branches in Ansira Bay, there are two branches in Ansira Bay, uh, and there's a branch in Androna Manelic, which is uh, about 15 kilometers north. There's a branch in Saradrua up in the mountains about 70 kilometers north. And there's a branch in Monaduna, which is about 20 kilometers south, and a branch in uh, Ambustra. And, uh, uh, and one additional branch in Nanzuma, which is uh, about 30 kilometers from Ambustra. So that's a fairly spread out district, but it's a district which is uh, becoming stronger. In addition to that, we have uh, two branches in Finaransu. Uh, we have uh, a branch in uh, Toma, or in Tuliar, a branch in Majanga, and two strong branches in um, uh, Fort Dauphin. And we just uh, created another branch in uh, Moramanga, which had been a group kind of isolated by itself, but they've been so faithful that uh, we finally petitioned uh, to have them uh, become a branch. With all of these new units in the church and all these centers of strength, um, you were mentioning that there have been a lot of uh, new buildings constructed in Madagascar. What can you tell us about those? There are two brand new stake centers, which are large, uh, very nice stake centers uh, that have just been completed and uh, dedicated in Tena. One is the Ivanji Stake Center, which is right next door to the American Embassy. And the other is the Manakamaini Stake Center, which is uh, not too far from the mission office. And uh, in addition to that, there's a brand new uh, uh, beautiful building in Tomatov, which was uh, just opened uh, a couple of months ago. 
and that's uh, serving now several of the branches in uh, in Tomatov. I'd like to just hear maybe what one of your most prominent spiritual experiences of your mission was. What after three years, what sticks out to you as one of just a really great experience that you always remember? Uh, of course, I had many spiritual experiences, but the one that comes to mind always and that I've mentioned be before is perhaps the experience I had right in the beginning of my mission in Andhra Numanilich, where we entered this little house, rented house, and um, the place was, even when we arrived fairly early, it was jam-packed with people on uh, hard, backless benches and squished in like sardines. And Dave and I had to sit in the front and the first two or three rows, there were seated these little kids all together on these little benches, quiet as a mouse. And they were mesmerized by everything the speaker said. And the congregation sang with all their heart. And you could just feel the spirit there. And for me, it was actually a turning point in the mission. Like I said, it happened right in the beginning. And it was a little bit tough in the beginning to, to be there for me. But when I had this experience, I just felt the Spirit so strongly that um, I felt privileged to serve with the people in Madagascar, with the saints in Madagascar, to be among these wonderful, happy people. Um, it just buoyed my spirits, and I knew that it would be a wonderful experience and that I would not be homesick and that I would do just fine if I did my part. What was maybe one of the most prominent spiritual experiences for you in your three years as mission president? Well, I think that uh, our last uh, fast and testimony meeting of our mission, which was uh, held in uh, Saradrua, we'd been to Saradrua uh, quite a few times, and just as a little background, um, Saradrua is up in the mountains. It's a, there's not even a village there. It's a group of saints who uh, walk from all over the hills, uh, many of them barefooted. They're the poorest of the poor. And that group started uh, several years ago as just a couple of individuals who went down to Monsider Bay and learned about the church and then brought back that message to their families and uh, more families and then more uh, people in that area started to learn about the church. Eventually, the missionaries were sent up there to teach the people who were anxious to hear about the church. And over time, a, a small group formed. And that group uh, grew and grew. And, and uh, finally, they built their own church. They built their own little wooden building, dirt floor. And our first uh, uh, experience there was uh, going to that little chapel as a hard four-wheel drive uh, trip up the mountain and then you had to walk in uh, for a distance and that group of saints were just warm and welcoming and there was a great spirit there. Over time that uh, little group became a branch and then that grant branch grew to the point where they had completely filled that building uh, they held their classes outside, and so we started to um, uh, make requests uh, to the area that uh, we would want to uh, build a, a better building for them. Um, during that uh, period of time, there had been a huge expansion, a, a very rapid expansion of the church all over Africa. And so the church came out with a policy that uh, there would only be one church-built building per stake, or uh, in some cases per district. And since this is a little teeny branch way out in the middle of nowhere, uh, they didn't really qualify under that uh, directive. But one of the... Um, 
caveats of that particular uh, policy was that in branches and units where there were no buildings to rent, then uh, the church could think outside the box. And this is something that uh, uh, is a little unusual for uh, the uh, church employees uh, in the building department is to think different than established um, uh, pre-designed buildings. Carl Cook, who was the uh, district president, came through uh, on a mission tour to explain to the various units of the church that particular building policy. And uh, so we have again made that request to Elder Cook, and Elder Cook said, okay, let me ask the branch president what he needs and what he would like. And so he met with the branch president. We met around a table, all standing, and, and uh, he, he said, President, he said, uh, what do you need? What, what are the needs of your branch? What can we do for you? Elder Cook, if you uh, provide for us 37,000 bricks and some bags of cement, we'll build our own chapel. So Elder Cook said, uh, okay, let us consider that. And they took that back to Johannesburg. And some time later, they met in council. In fact, they met in council with the Elder Bednar. And this proposal had, been, uh, had become uh, somewhat famous. The 37,000 brick chapel. Uh, the, the authorization was given. The bricks were provided in the cement. And this little group of saints out in the middle of nowhere uh, constructed their own brick chapel with a metal roof and a cement floor and, and uh, plastered walls. And it's a very nice, sturdy building, very large for their use. And they converted that old little chapel, which was right next to it. They put cement in the floor and divided it, and so they have classrooms. We attended um, church there. Uh, for one of the, the first meetings in that chapel, and that was that fast and testimony meeting. And here you have this group of saints who are so poor that many of them are in rags. Many of them are barefooted. They're just rice farmers up in the mountains. And uh, the testimonies of almost everybody in that meeting were about tithing and about the benefits of tithing. That branch uh, has a very high percentage of tithing faithfulness and has now had, I think, five full-time missionaries serve, serving uh, from that one branch. It's a very great testimony that the gospel changes lives, it makes an impact, and you don't have to have money to, uh, to do that. You got to meet the new mission president, Madagascar. Um, tell us a little bit about him and where you see the church going in the next three years and the years to come. The new president, uh, President uh, Foote and, and Sister Foote, are from Reno, Nevada. And they bring uh, with them a, a great enthusiasm. They're real people, people. And uh, they're very uh, outgoing. And I think uh, the missionaries and the members are going to, uh, to love them. Um, I see the church continuing to advance and strengthen. As I uh, mentioned, uh, I think that in the next uh, three years, uh, we're probably going to see another stake in uh, uh, Tana. And uh, I think that uh, also Ansira Bay will uh, uh, be preparing to become a stake uh, with uh, Tamatov uh, uh, following uh, somewhat uh, behind them. Um, I also see, uh, in order for the church to uh, really uh, grow to the next step, uh, that uh, sometime in the future that the uh, mission uh, will probably be divided, and uh, uh, so that there will be two mission presidents that will be able to spend more time, more individual time with the units. That will uh, allow uh, some of the cities like Diego and, and uh, uh, Morondava and, and some of those other cities 
uh, to uh, receive missionaries. Um, the, the goal that everybody is uh, really uh, working towards is to have a temple uh, in Madagascar so that uh, those lives of uh, the saints can be strengthened and changed by more than once in a lifetime uh, experience at the temple. And uh, that's going to come. It'll be several years away, but the, the church as it strengthens and grows, and especially as we receive uh, these missionaries, Madag Malagasy missionaries who are going off and serving missions, missions as they come back. We now have about 150 uh, return missionaries. Uh, there are about 110 or 20 missionaries that are serving currently who are from Madagascar. And so within a short period of time, there will be 300, then 500 return missionaries. That's going to dramatically change. We just, uh, uh, about uh, earlier this year, we, we established the first all-return missionary branch presidency. And uh, that's going to happen more and more. So as more and more missionaries come back and become leaders, the church is going to uh, mature and strengthen and, uh, and, uh, and progress. We have the, the greatest uh, respect and love for all the missionaries who have served. Uh, you are really uh, pioneers, uh, along with the members. And um, Madagascar is, uh, in a way, like Brazil was 50 years ago, or Mexico was 50 years ago. About the, the church was about the same size and had many of the same issues. Um, and look at those two areas now. I think that uh, the groundwork that you have done through your sacrifices uh, will have profound uh, impact uh, carried out over generations. And so um, not only um, from the people that you uh, actually baptized, but for people that you taught and maybe didn't baptize, but maybe later on accepted the gospel. Um, we never know the effects of, uh, of your work, um, but we know that uh, this had a great impact on many people, and it's also had a great impact on you and, uh, and the uh, uh, generations of your own family because of your great service. Uh, we are grateful for your service, and uh, uh, thank you for, uh, for being here this evening. Yes, thank you. And I think even though we don't know you, we will have a connection with everybody who served in that mission, the Madagascar mission.